Hello, I'm Jane Alalibo, and I'll be taking you on the topic, democracy, in the theme, democracy. At the end of the lesson, I expect that you'll be able to define democracy, enumerate the features of democracy, list the democratic institutions we have in the country, and also state the roles that they play, and also state the importance and benefits of democracy. Now into our lesson. What is democracy? I'm sure we've heard that term a lot of times on TV, on the radio, from our parents or from our teachers. Democracy can be defined as a system of government in which the people are involved in the governance of the country directly or indirectly. And when we say indirectly, we mean through elected representatives. Leadership in democracy is not about the leader or the president. It is about the people. That is why we can also define democracy as government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Democracy is all about the people. Now, there are certain features of democracy. Now, these are things that exist where you have democracy. They are the major things that make up democracy. The first one we have is periodic free and fair elections. Another feature is supremacy of the constitution. The third feature, the rule of law. Four, multi-party system. Five, separation of powers. Six, accountability of the government to the people. And seven, fundamental human rights. Now, note that these are not all the features that make up democracy. There may be other features that if you take your time to study or think about, you would come up with. But these are some major features of democracy. We're going to discuss them one by one. The first, periodic free and fair elections. Now, this is a major feature of democracy. In any country where they run a democratic system, elections must be run from time to time. That is, periodically. It must be run from time to time. For example, in Nigeria, we have four years interval before every election. And in these elections, eligible citizens come out to vote or choose a leader for themselves. When we say eligible citizens, we mean people who are above the age of 18 years. Those are people that are allowed to vote in a country like Nigeria. And these elections must be free and fair. That is, there will be no rigging or tampering of election results by anyone. When we have free and fair election, that is a feature of democracy. But note that if the elections are not free and fair, this means it has been rigged, the choice of the people have been tampered with, then it is no longer free and fair. And if elections is not free and fair, it is not even a feature of democracy. In a democratic state or country, elections must be held free and fair. And usually these elections are very competitive because you see different people from different political parties coming to compete or contest campaign for power. And this platform of political parties is formed so that the people can also have the best choice. Where you have up to three or four people contesting for elections, you see that people are able to choose the one that they think is the best leader for the country. Another feature of democracy is the will of the people. This means that the will of the people prevails over the will of any individual or group. It is almost the same thing as the rule of law. Nobody or no, no group has power over another. Everyone is equal before the law. 
this is what we mean we almost mean the same thing here the will of the people comes before the will of any individual this means that the president of a country cannot decide to do something out of his own will it has to be what the people want that is what democracy is about government of the people by the people and for the people it has to be about the people, the masses, everyone, not one individual or a group of people. The government must have the support of the people. That is why elections are conducted. No one can be appointed by another person as the president of a country like Nigeria. It has to be the one that everyone comes together to choose because they are only in power to meet the needs of the people one and to serve the interests of the people they are not there for their personal interests now another feature of democracy is the supremacy of the constitution in every democratic state or country there must be a constitution in which the laws of the country are embedded and this constitution or these laws are what guide check and control the activities of the government it controls the activities of the government and not just government the people as well the constitution is supreme this means it is above everyone it is the last or the first point of call nobody can do anything outside the constitution when someone goes against the constitution or goes against the law, he or she is, will, is meant to be punished. In every democratic country or state, there is a supreme constitution which guides and checks the activities of everyone in that state or country. Another feature is the rule of law. We have learned about the rule of law in a previous study. The rule of law is simply a principle that states that no one is above the law. Everyone is below the law. And the laws of the land must be respected and obeyed strictly by everybody, including the president. In every democratic state, this is how it's supposed to be. Everyone obeys and follows the law. And also, everyone is equal before the law. Everybody is treated equally, irrespective of tribe, age, political, or economic status. This is a feature of democracy. Wherever you hear that democracy is practiced, for example, you tell someone in Nigeria, we practice democracy. These features are meant to be seen or found. Another feature of democracy is multi-party system. Now, this is a system in which there are different parties, different parties in a country, not just one. The political parties ensure that the best representative is chosen during elections as the leader. In a country like Nigeria, we have different parties, and during elections, they all come or send their representatives to contest during the elections the best person the people's choice the one that who thinks is the best is chosen as the leader now this creates room for competition which motivates elected leaders to perform properly so that they are not replaced by another party during the next election for example you have one party ruling they try their best to meet the needs or meet the interests of the people so that in the coming elections, the people will still vote them into power. Another feature of democracy is separation of powers. In democracy, we usually have separation of powers. Power is not concentrated on one person. No. Power is shared among the different arms of government. The different arms of government are the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. Power is shared among these three different arms. So this is done in order to maintain checks and balance among the different arms of government. For example, the judiciary or the legislature checks the activities of the executive. The president, which happens to be the executive, is not allowed to make a law on his own. 
it must be debated by the legislative arm of government. This way, they are able to check themselves. In checking themselves, they are able to meet the interests of the people. For example, if the president wants to make a law that is not in favor of the people, the senators in the legislative arm of government can go against the law. They can speak against it because they know that it's not in favor of people in their constituencies. The separation of powers helps to maintain checks and balance, and this way, the rights and needs of the people are respected. We also have accountability of the government to the people as a feature of democracy. This is very important. Remember, it is the people that choose their leader. After they have chosen a leader, it is expected that the leader is able to account to them on his or her activities. They are not sent there to meet their personal needs. No, they are sent there by the people to meet the needs of everyone. And they have to account for these things. The government should be able to account for monies spent, the projects they embark on, and the policies that they implement. All these things must be in favor of the people. This is a feature of democracy. Another feature is fundamental human rights. Democracy protects and upholds the rights of the citizens. It protects and upholds the rights of the citizens. In a democratic state, people are allowed to enjoy and exercise their rights and freedoms. Nobody has the right to infringe on the rights of another person. People can enjoy their rights like freedom of movement, freedom of speech, right to life, right to vote and be voted for. In every democratic state, the fundamental human rights of the citizens must be respected. Now, we have some institutions that help to ensure the smooth running of a democratic system in a country. Without these institutions, then democracy is not real. It is not attainable. One we have is the INEC, also known as the Independent National Electoral Commission. This is the full meaning of INEC. This is a body that is in charge of elections in Nigeria. We also have political parties pressure groups and arms of government. These are institutions that ensure smooth running of democracy in the country. We are going to look at them individually and how they are able to influence democracy. The first, INEC, which is the Independent National Electoral Commission. Now, this is a body that was created with the responsibility of organizing and conducting elections in Nigeria. They ensure that elections are conducted from time to time, freely and fairly, following a due process. Whenever it, it is time for elections in Nigeria, I'm sure we get to hear INEC, INEC, INEC. Now, this is because they are in charge, solely in charge of elections in Nigeria and all the activities must be according to the constitution. Even if they are in charge of the elections, they must still do as the constitution states. Now we're going to look at their functions, how they help to promote democracy. A major function of INEC is that they conduct, like we've just learned, organize and supervise elections. They ensure that these elections are run freely. That means they make room for the people to choose who they want as a leader. They are, they are supposed to make sure that no contestant or party tries to rig or tamper with the election result. That is why they are the ones who collate and count votes and also announce the election result. They are supposed to be a neutral body. That is, they shouldn't belong to any party or try to favor any party. Another function of INEC is that they are responsible for the compilation and maintenance of the register of voters. Now, when every citizen becomes eligible to vote, that is when you are above 18 years, you are registered as a voter. 
and all the voters, all the people who are eligible to vote, are compiled in the register of voters. It is INEC that are in charge of this registration process. Another function of INEC is that they are responsible for dividing the country into voting districts. That is what we know as constituencies. It is the INEC that divides the country into different constituencies. And note that this division is only done when elections are being conducted into the legislative houses, which are the Senate, the House of Assembly, and the House of Representatives. Voting people into these legislative houses are done through constituency division. But when we are to have general elections, that is to elect a president, then there is no division into constituencies. Everybody just votes whom they want as the president. And it is INEC that are in charge of these division of voting districts. INEC also registers political parties, not just the electorate. Now, the electorate are the people who vote. INEC registers the political parties. The commission has the authority to register and register parties, one. They also have the authority to monitor the organization and operations of the different political parties. They also monitor and make rules concerning political campaigns. Generally, you can say INEC are in charge of parties. They check the activities, the excesses of the different political parties. Before any party can be recognized as a political party that comes out to contest during elections, it must be registered with INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission. Another democratic institution which we have is the political party, the different political parties that we have. This institution also helps to promote democracy. Now, a political party refers to a group of like-minded people with the same political ideologies, beliefs, interests, and goals. They must have one political goal. In a country like Nigeria, where we have over 25 different political parties. In each party, they have one goal. In another party, they have one goal. They come together and contest elections to hold powers in the government. Nigeria operates a multi-party system. That is why we have over 25 political parties in the country. Some of the most prominent ones which we know are the People's Democratic Party, also known as PDP, the All Progressive Congress, also known as APC, the All Progressive Grand Alliance, also known as APGA, the Action Congress, also known as AC, Progressive People's Alliance, also known as PPA, and the Labour Party. These are only but a few of the political parties which we have in Nigeria. Now, what are their functions? That is, how do they help democracy? How do they promote and support democracy? One, political parties serve as watchdogs as they make the people in government responsible and accountable to the people through constructive criticism. Now, we've talked about different political parties. Let's take, for example, we have PDP as the ruling party. That is the president of a country belongs to PDP. You see that the other parties now serve as watchdogs. This means that they keep checking the activities of the government, of the president, of the ruling party. And where they are not performing well, they begin to criticize them openly through the mass media. And this is known as constructive criticism. This is just to put them in check, to correct them when they are making mistakes, and also to tell them what they need to do for the people. That is one function of political parties. They help in keeping the government or the ruling party responsible and accountable to the people. Political parties also enlighten the people on the political state of the country. They do this through meetings, the mass media, rallies, and election campaigns. 
a lot of things go on that the general public do not know about. But through political parties, we are able to know. For example, there are times when a prominent person in a particular party goes to the media and put, makes a statement or writes something that is now put in the newspaper. They use all those means to inform the public about what is going on in the political arena. Through their rallies and election campaigns, they are also able to enlighten people more on the political state of the country. Political parties also help to promote national unity and mutual understanding. Now, in political parties in Nigeria, you have different people, people from diverse backgrounds, people from different parts of the country. You have the Northerners in APC, you have the Southerners in APC, you have people from the Eastern region in APC. The same thing goes for every other political party, people from different regions. So you see that political parties also help to promote national unity. It helps to bring the nation together, irrespective of ethnic diversities. And it helps to promote mutual understanding. Because for people to be in a political party, they must have, remember in our definition, they must have the same political goals, ideologies, and interests. So political parties help to promote national unity and mutual understanding. Another function of political parties is that they are a machinery through which people are appointed into government positions or offices. Now imagine if, we, if people had to randomly come up and contest elections. That is, anyone could just come from anywhere. It wouldn't be nice because you wouldn't know the interest or the intention of the person. But political parties help us to streamline this. That is... We know the political parties we have in the country and each political party brings one representative to represent that party during elections. This helps to streamline the choice of the people and usually political parties pick out their best representatives. That is through elections in their political parties as well. They elect the best person who now represents them during the general Election. So you see that it is a machinery through which people are appointed into government positions and offices. Even when it's time to contest for elections in the legislative houses, it is people from political parties that are appointed into these positions. The political parties nominate and sponsor their candidates. There are people who have good leadership potentials but do not maybe have the money to sponsor themselves during an election for campaign and other expenses. The political parties help to sponsor such people. Another function of political parties is that it provides an efficient body capable of leading the nation. Remember what I said about anyone just deciding to contest elections. That will be putting the nation at a risk because we do not really know if the person is capable or not. We do not know the intentions of the person. But when you have a political party as a whole with different capable people, it creates or builds an efficient body that now leads the nation. Political parties also serve as a ready alternative to the government in power. For instance, the government in power are not ruling at the best interest of the people. You have other parties that are waiting to take power from them. So you do not have a situation whereby the people are stuck with one leader because there is no one else to take the positions. Political parties serve as good, ready oppositions and alternatives to the government in power. That is if they are not doing their duties properly. It also draws the people nearer to the government. Now, in political parties, they usually have meetings. This way, individuals, the masses, the people are drawn nearer to the government. For example, a party, someone from a particular party wins the elections. And I have been a member of that party. This way, I can have access to the government and state what I want for myself, for my community, for my environment. So you see that political parties help to draw the government nearer to the people. Imagine if we had just 
one person as the leader it would be very very difficult but since we have parties in those parties there are different positions that people occupy the people are able to reach the government easily it brings or draws people nearer to the government another democratic institution which we have is the pressure group we have different pressure groups in nigeria now first of all pressure groups refer to a group of people that share common interests or goals they come together and try to influence government policies in the interests of their members that is group of people that are bound by a particular goal or interest for example we have the national union of teachers this is a pressure group they are bound by their profession as teachers and they have the same goals and interests they come together and they try to influence government policies at their best interest another example of pressure groups is the Nigerian Labour Congress. These are pressure groups that we have in Nigeria. They use different measures such as the mass media, peaceful protests, strike action and negotiations to get the government to meet their needs. Sometimes you could see that teachers decide to go on a strike, probably when they are not being paid well. They do this so that they can influence or change the mind of the government to suit their interests or to do their bidding to do what they want now these pressure groups also help in promoting democracy we're going to see how in their functions the pressure group also creates awareness and enlightened people about their rights and duties as citizens of a particular country they tell them the things that they are entitled to and the things that they owe to their country. They do this for their members through seminars, symposiums, and the general public as a whole. They also make the public aware of national issues. In an example of teachers not being paid, the country as a whole may be unaware, but the group, the National Union of Teachers, could inform the public on what is going on. This means they are able to inform the public about national issues. They also act as a bridge between the government and the people. How do they do this? They do this by fighting for the interests of their members and the general public. I always say one individual cannot make much of a change, but when People come together and form a united force. They are able to fight for a particular cause together and effect change. And the last function of pressure groups is that they provide manpower needed by the government in different fields. For example, some pressure groups are formed based on profession. That is, people in a particular profession. For example, you have the Nigerian Bar Association for lawyers. You have the Nigerian Union of Teachers for teachers. Now, if experts in these different fields are needed by the government, they could easily go to these unions or pressure groups and pick an expert from there in any field. So we see that the pressure groups provide manpower needed by the government in different fields, especially when they need an expert to provide some kind of information or solution in that field. Another democratic institution that helps to strengthen democracy or promote democracy are the arms of government. The different arms of government we have are the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. Powers are shared among these different arms of government and in performing their different duties, they are able to promote democracy. How does this happen? Sharing of powers among the different arms of government promotes or creates room for checks and balances. This means that the different arms are able to check the excesses of each other. The legislature can check the excesses of the executive and the judiciary can check the excesses of the executive and the legislature too. 
they check themselves and make sure that they are not exceeding their boundaries. This way, they are able to protect the freedoms and the rights of the citizens. That is how the arms of government can sustain or promote democracy. Now, we've been talking about democracy. You may wonder why democracy is very important or what the benefits of democracy are. Democracy is like the most preferred system of government. It's preferred to autocracy in which you have a ruler that rules over everyone. Democracy ensures participation of the people in the government affairs. This means that everybody is carried along. The people are not neglected. Decisions are not based on the interest or the will of an individual. Everybody makes the decision together so that it is going to favor and benefit everyone. It protects the interest of the minority. This means everybody gets a share of everything. Everybody joins in making decisions. People are not neglected or overlooked. Another important or benefit of democracy is that it protects and guarantees the basic rights and freedoms of the citizens. In a country where democracy is practiced, it is expected that the rights of the citizens and their freedoms are protected and guaranteed. This means you can exercise your rights and enjoy them freely without any boundary. You can exercise and enjoy them. And even when your rights are being infringed on, you can also report and make a case for yourself in the court. It is expected that any country that practices democracy has all of these benefits to their citizens. Another important or benefit is that it gives people the opportunity and the rights to elect or appoint the leader that they want. Democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Everyone cannot be a leader at the same time, so they decide to choose a leader through the electoral process in which people come out and vote for a leader of their choice. So democracy gives people the opportunity to choose the leader that they want for themselves. Leaders are not just forced on the people. Another importance of democracy is that it eradicates autocracy and misuse of power. Democracy, we cannot over overemphasize the definition of democracy. It is all about the people. Where you have democracy, you cannot have autocracy because they are directly opposed to each other. They are the opposite of each other. In democracy, everyone has a say. Everyone participates in governance. Everyone participates in decision making. But in autocracy, it is done by one individual. So democracy eradicates autocracy and misuse of power. How? Powers are not concentrated on one person or a group of people. It is shared among different arms. It is also shared among different levels. All of these help to promote democracy and erase autocracy. Another importance is that the people have a say. Everybody has a say. Before the government implements a particular policy or does a particular thing, everybody must have a say. How do we do this? Of course, government cannot come and ask everybody one by one. That is why we have senators from our different constituencies representing us in the legislative houses, which are the Senate and the House of Representatives. The people that are elected into these houses are there to represent the interests of their constituencies. So you see that this way, everybody has a say in decision making. People are also free to state their needs and requirements from the government. That is why we have the mass media today. Anybody can go to a radio station or go to the TV and state what their needs are. On the radio stations today, we have shows where people are allowed to call and say what is happening in their environment. Sometimes people call and complain about their roads, the life situation. This is done so that it will get to the ears of the government. So you see, in a democratic country, in a democratic state, people are free 
to say what they want. They are also free to criticize the inactions of the government. That is where the government is not doing well. People can speak up against it. Another importance is that it ensures stability in the country. How? By ensuring peaceful and orderly change of government through an electoral process. What did we say about transparent electoral process? That is a feature of democracy. In every democratic system, they must run free and fair elections from time to time. So you see that democracy makes room or ensures stability and peaceful change of government. If elections are not run, we will have things like coup d'etat in which there will be loss of lives and property and instability in the country. But with democracy, we have periodic free and fair elections. Another importance or benefit of democracy is that it supports the law. As everyone, including the government, must act in accordance with the law. The supremacy of the law or the constitution is an important feature of democracy. So democracy supports the law just as the law supports democracy. And it is expected that everyone is below or obedient to the law. These are the importance or benefits of democracy now in summary what and what have we learned today first we learned that democracy is government of the people by the people and for the people this is the shortest and easiest way to define democracy the people are directly involved in governance through elected representatives we also learned about the features of democracy and let's list some of them. We talked about periodic elections, accountability of the government to the people, and multi-party system. These are some of the features of democracy. We also learned that there are some institutions that are responsible for the smooth running of democracy. That is, without these institutions, we cannot have democracy in place. One way or the other, through their activities, they help to promote and sustain democracy. Some of them include INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, responsible for elections in Nigeria. We also have political parties and pressure groups. And democracy is important because the people participate in governance and the people are not mistreated by the government. That is the heart of democracy. People are directly involved in democracy. Everybody has a say and everybody's needs are met. This is all for our lesson on democracy. I hope you have learned a lot today because myself, I've learned a lot. Now, as usual, we'll have our test section. And we have just two questions today to answer. The first question, which of the following is not a feature of democracy? Option A, the rule of law. B, supremacy of the constitution. C, supremacy of the president. And D, periodic elections. Is the rule of law a feature of democracy? Yes, it is. Supremacy of the constitution, is that a feature of democracy? Yes, it is. Supremacy of the president, is that a feature of democracy? I'm not sure. I don't think so. And periodic elections, is that a feature of democracy? Yes, it is. The correct answer is C, supremacy of the president. This is not a feature of democracy. In democracy, everybody has a say. Nobody is supreme. The only thing that is supreme is the law or the constitution. Now, the second test question. Dash is not a democratic institution. A, INEC. B, political parties. C, cult groups. 
and D, pressure groups. INEC is a democratic institution. Political parties are democratic institutions. Pressure groups are also democratic institutions. Cult groups, no, they are not democratic institutions. They do not promote or support democracy. Rather, they cause disorder and chaos in society. The correct answer is C. This brings us to the end of our lesson on democracy. Thank you and bye. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to our channel. You can also turn on notifications to stay updated on new videos on this channel. This brain friend video was brought to you by Sinforest. For more of these amazing e-learning videos, get your copy of Brain Friend. With more than a thousand e-learning videos, over 74,000 test items in more than 40 subjects, a career counseling guide, and many other amazing features, BrainFriend remains your foremost e-learning and exam preparatory software. BrainFriend. Learn better. Make excellent grades.